Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, as we continue talking about the knowledge of God. Now, this is, this is the last week of, of the month of August. And it's important that as we wind down this topic on the knowledge of God, that I bring um, some things to you, to your mind. But before we do that, before we go into today's message, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Join me and say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread is coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, also in the city, if you're in the city of Abuja, I'm inviting you for our worship experience, Stark Sweet Incense. And the Lord has commanded us to hold this meeting to bring forth a sound to him that he will be pleased with. And when we bring forth that sound, he will release his mercy upon us as a people. Now, wherever you are, of course, we're going to be um, streaming online so you can join us. But if you are in the city of Abuja, make it a date with us. It's holding in Wuye District at the Hulu studio. The address and contact is on your screen. And you can just make yourself available and join us to bless the name of the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Turn your Bibles with me now to Jeremiah. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his name. Jeremiah. Chapter 9. All that is within me, bless his name. Verse 23. Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Now this is God speaking. This is God speaking. This is not, not someone giving his opinion about God. This is someone quoting God. Jeremiah here was quoting what the Lord have said to him. Okay. He said, thus say, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. We, we had this discussion the last week or early this week. I think it was last week. And I was telling you, don't, don't excite yourself because of the works you do. Because at the end of the day, if you don't have the knowledge of God, your works, all your works, all the glory that you amass on the earth, all the, the things people think about you will come to naught. So I give the example between Moses, who got locked out of entering the promised land at the end, towards the end of his work, despite all the mighty works that he's done. And I compared Moses with Apostle Paul, who said, after everything I've seen, I've achieved, I've done, I count everything as done for one thing, for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. So Paul realized at the end of the day, the most important thing is to know God. Now God is speaking here in the same light. He says, but let him that glory at verse 24, Jeremiah chapter 9. But let him that glory at glory in this, that he understand it. I'm reading from the old King James. And know it me. That I am the Lord who exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, says the Lord. He said, anyone who wants to glory, anyone who wants to boast, anyone who wants to think he's something, let him do it in this regard, that he knows and understands me. You know why God said that? Because for you to know this, for you to come to this point, he has to choose you. You can never know God by studying. I'm telling you the truth. You can never know God by studying. For you to know God, you have to be given access to him. That's why he's saying here that that's the most important thing. You can do miracles without knowing God. Oh, yes. 
You remember Jesus in his day, the disciples came to meet him one time. I said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in your name and we forbade him because he was not one of us. And what did Jesus say? Jesus said, don't forbid him because the fact that you don't know him doesn't mean he's doing the wrong thing. Jesus said, don't forbid him. Now, before they came to that conclusion to say that he was not one of us, they must have asked amongst themselves. Maybe they even asked the, pre the fellow, hey, do you know Jesus? And the person said, well, um, I don't know Jesus. Like, so how are you doing this thing? Well, it's a gift. I said, what? Better stop it. Because you were not schooled by Jesus, you were not taught by it. You see, before they got to that conclusion, if the guy had said, yeah, I attend Jesus' crusade, oh, Okay, well, come, let's introduce you to Jesus. Have you met him personally? No, I just listened to his teaching. They would have, they would have given him the right hand of faith. But for them to get to that point where they said, we stopped him because he was not one of us. I want you to think. Because that's what God wants you to do too. So they said they stopped him. And what's their reason? for stopping him because he was not one of them, okay? So they felt for you to be able to do miracles properly, you must have received power from Jesus, okay? But this fellow, they confirmed, however they confirmed that, I believe it was not an assumption. I know also that if they had asked and the man had said he knows Jesus, maybe he came to meet Jesus secretly and Jesus anointed him or whatever, they wouldn't have stopped. But the, their conclusion was, hey man, stop what you're doing because we don't think this is right. We are the Jesus people, custodians of his miraculous power. You understand what I'm talking about? But so they stopped him. Why? Because they didn't know him. And Jesus said, don't stop him. So I said that to say, yes, of a truth. It's not everybody that does miracles that know Jesus. And also it doesn't mean that their miracles are false or wrong. See, God has ways of showing mercy. And that's also why you must not judge your knowledge or your closeness to God by the miracles that you perform. You understand what I'm talking about? You don't judge it by those things. Because God in his, um, in his way of showing mercy can use anything. So somebody say, I didn't know what to do. I just felt I should eat that leaf and I'll be fine. And then he ate the leaf and he got better. Does that mean that leaf now carry miraculous power? No, not necessary. God just showed mercy on that fellow. He doesn't even know how he got healed. It's the truth. So the most important thing is not the works that you do. The most important thing is how he's giving you access into his knowledge. And that's what Jeremiah was speaking here. Say, anyone who wants to glory should glory in this. And he knows and understands me. Now, in knowing God, I told you this before. I'm going to be touching on several things because we're winding up, okay? So in knowing God, um, how God gives you access to that knowledge is by works. Let me explain what I mean by works. You must gather experience. In, in What do you mean gather experience? In your dealings with people, in your doing the work of the ministry, and that this doesn't mean it's only for pastors and, and title holders you know, as we think in church. Everybody has been called to do the work of the ministry. What is the work of the ministry? Edifying the body, okay? So anything you're doing to bring edification to the body is the work of the ministry. If your job is to sing and you are singing, you're doing the work of the ministry. If your job is to walk to the next house because you just felt something was not right and you took it up in prayer and then you feel, get to this point, you feel, I think I should talk to them. And then you go across and say, hey, um, I, I feel I should just come and pray with you guys. You don't have to be a pastor to do that. You're doing the work of the ministry because at the end of the day, words come from you. They are edified. If God tells you, look, take that money and go give to that person. And you go and say, Hey, I, I, I was praying and God said I should bring this money to, to you. 
and, and they are happy, they're excited. You're doing the work of the ministry. And every one of us have been called to do the work of the ministry. That's why I talk about tithes, the way I, I talk about it, okay? Because even if you don't want to give, the tithe makes you a giver, see? Yes, even if you don't want to give anybody anything, the tithe, tithing puts you in a position where you will have to be a giver. And when you are giving your tithe, you must make sure you are giving it to God. How do you give it to God? I've said this many, many times. God is our life. He is our life. He is our life. What does that mean? You can communicate with him and give him his money. Now, how do you give God his money? He tells you exactly what he would want you to do with his money. He will tell you who to give it to. Now, like I said, even if you don't want to give anything, see, giving of tithes is a must. Yes. Praise God. Giving of tithe is a must. Even if you don't want to give anything. And that's because God has placed you in a place where, yeah, you've heard me say this. So why, why do I say, oh, why would you say giving of tithe is a must? Why would you say that? Yeah, you're, it's like, are you not trying to force people to give? Listen, call it whatever name you need to call it. Why is giving of tithe a must? Because at the end of the day, the whole world is going to be judged by those who tithe and those who do not tithe. It's as simple as that. Jesus himself said it. If you've not, if you've not, if you don't understand that, look for my teachings on that. I think I did that several weeks ago. I explained how Jesus is going to ask the world Yes, I said the world, the world for tithes. Everyone is going to be judged by that. So now here, God has already put up a system to make everybody show responsibility in the area of giving. And all he demanded was 10%. Um, we're talking about the knowledge of God. So it's good you understand why would God think this? Why would God say this? So people argue in the New Testament, there's no tithe. You don't even know in the first place. Why there was tithing in the Old Testament. You don't even know. You don't understand what God was doing. So it's easy for you to come up now and say, in the New Testament, there is no tithing. And that's even wrong. They were, they were tithing in the New Testament. <laughs> Praise God. Show me, show me in the Bible. Uh, so what are we doing today? Am I not part of the New Testament? And I tithe. Praise <laughs> God. Oh, yes, I do. But here's the point. Even when we tithe, it is important we do it properly. And how do we do it properly? We give God his money. So, so now I bring my tithe before the Lord and I say, Lord, here is your money. Because we pay tithe to him, not to men. Okay? So I, 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 I spend time and I'm talking to him, Lord, you've given me this money. And I'm taking up, taking out my tithe from it, which is yours. And I need your instruction on where you want it delivered, where you want it to go. Now, it is his responsibility because he is alive. Please don't forget that part. Because he is alive, it is his responsibility to now tell me, take it to so-so and so place. Take it to so-so and so person. Take it to that church. Take it to your own pastor. Take it to that other pastor. Give it to that sister. Give it to that, oh, give it to that colleague of yours. Give it to that neighbor of yours. Wherever he tells you to give it. Ah, how can you prove that in scripture? Moses told the children of Israel. Now you know all the scriptures, but you see, the application is where you have a problem. And that's what I'm teaching you. Moses told them different ways they tithe in the law. Now, what do you think God was doing with that? He was teaching them what the Holy Spirit, everything you see in the law is fulfilled in the New Testament, okay? Now, what do you mean is fulfilled in the New Testament? The Holy Spirit will be the one to guide you, not because you are following a law, but when the Holy Spirit leads you and guides you, you turn back and realize that, oh, now I understand what the law says, okay? So we find in the law, Moses telling them, oh, there is a tithe you take with your family and you go eat it in the place where God would mention, okay? Now he says there is a tithe also you give to the Levites. There is a tithe also that you give to 
to the you bring that that's even that one the one you do every tithing every three years which is the year of tithe you bring all the tithe at the end of the year bring it out to your gates and when you bring it out to your gate what happens the widows the motherless the strangers the levites they come take to their fool see and you've heard me say that that's how jesus got a donkey that he used to go into jerusalem Someone was obeying the law of Moses, you see? So that's also the way, if we all obey the law that God has given concerning Titan, even in the New Testament, what is the law God has given concerning Titan? The Spirit of God will guide you in this. So now you are here and the Holy Spirit tells you, take your tithe and send it to so-so and so person. And then you obey. You see that obedience that you are obeying? Number one, it makes you a giver. You understand what I'm saying? Number two, it makes you a distributor of God's wealth on the earth. See? Number three, you are edifying the body of Christ. Number four, you are shining as light. Can you get what I'm saying? So now you take your tithe. You walk up to this unbeliever. Not, not of your own. Please get me right. Eh, me, eh, me, I can never give my tithe to church. I give it to widows and orphans and all that. It doesn't mean you're doing what is right. You think you're doing what is right, but listen to what I'm telling you. Please listen. Because there is no difference between what you are doing and those who are just giving it to church. Both of you can stand before the Lord and the Lord will tell you, I never received your tithes. Yes. But Jesus said, I'll, I'll say to people, I never knew you. So what I'm teaching you is how to ensure that even in your day-to-day -day dealings, God is involved. If God is involved, if God is telling me where to tithe, if God is telling me how to tithe, if God is telling me where to take his money to, how can he then tell me that he doesn't know me? Are you getting what I'm saying? It's impossible. His receipts are all over. Praise God. You know, like someone trying to deny you. All you need to do is proof transaction or communication between you and that person. Is this not your phone number? Yes, it's my phone number. You called me on this day, this day, this day. This is the message you sent to me. And everyone look and say, why do you tell lies? So God cannot be sending you on errand. You know, not, not a man sending you on errand in the name of God. Now that can happen. And then you go, but God, you know me. Say, I don't know you. Hey, but God, no, I never sent you on any errand. That, that's why I'm teaching you what I'm teaching you. So that you will know. It's not on that day. You no, know, say someone say, we don't know on that day who will be saved. Now I know I'll be saved. I know. Praise. Why? Because I have fellowship with him. He instructs me. He tells me what to do now. He tells me what to do today. Praise God. How then can he tell me on that day that, sorry, I don't know you. Okay. Is there any other God? But when you don't have any dealing with him, that's when you begin to tell yourself that we don't know who will be saved on that day. Let us just be doing what we are doing. No, brothers and sisters, no today. So now you see, you are being a blessing, you are being a light to everyone around you. Not because you choose who you want to be a blessing to. And that's how God can tell you to take money to someone you don't even like. I'm praying and say, Father, and they say, give it to, them. ah, no, hey, how, how, how will I go to, ah, Lord, I can't go to his house. Lord said, Lord said, you have my money. Yes. I want him to have it. Ah, eh, mm, 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 mm. Mm. Father, you've not, I've told you what to do. And you struggle with that one day, two days, one week, two weeks, you're still struggling with that. And finally, that's because that's what the Holy Spirit does. He won't change his mind because of your attitude. And finally, he says, are you ready to give me my tithe now? I said, yes, Lord, I'm ready. Take it to that person. <sighs> okay. Now you're forced to call the person. Now you're forced to go see the person or find a way to communicate with the person. And then at the end of the day, the person says, I'm so sorry. Actually, I've been thinking, but I didn't know how to come and apologize to you, what kind of this thing you did. I am really, really sorry. And then reconciliation takes place. Everything happens and everybody's happy. And then now you're realizing, oh, God, you're just too much. Yes, it's too much. Praise God. It's, can we just let the Holy Spirit guide us and do his thing? Everybody's going to be happy. I'm telling you the truth. Everybody's going to be fine. The reason we, now that's what Jesus said, that they may be one as we are one. He's not saying all of you gather on that one roof. 
and, and listen to one person. No. The one person he wants every of us, to, every one of us to listen to is him. We don't need to quarrel. We just need to listen to the Holy Spirit. I don't need to agree with you. I just need to listen to the Holy Spirit. And guess what? When I listen to the Holy Spirit and you listen to the Holy Spirit, guess what? We'll all come to the place where you're like, ah, you are here too. Ah, ah. It means I'm wondering how you're here. The Holy Spirit brought me the Holy Spirit. Ah, so the Holy Spirit can't, uh, yeah. so why are we quarreling? You're my brother. You're my brother. It's as simple as that. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Your ways are just too good. And I pray that the world come to understand you and understand your way. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Don't forget, if you are in the city of Abuja, we want to see you this evening by 6 o'clock. God bless you. Bye. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.